Got a busy schedule? Stay tuned and watch this video to see how a med student with zero time exam preps. Everyone wants to do better on their exams, whether you're a med student, nursing student, law student or art student. Typically doing better on your exams means you've got a better comprehension of the material you're meant to be learning, you've got a better chance of future career prospects, and you might even have a more satisfied feeling at the end of your degree. And it doesn't matter whether you're one of the top tier students getting consistent 90% grades, whether you're a more average student just wanting to see if you can break away from the pack, or if you've been treading water nearly failing for a while and you just want to create a safe buffer. Really, all of these people, if you are one of them and you want to be better than you were yesterday and you're trying to find ways to be better, that's already a trait that's commendable in and of itself. But there's so much to do. You've got lectures, tutorials, assignments, presentations, the exams at the end of it that you've consistently got to be studying for and you might have travel in between all of this. That's just your academic life to top it all off. You've got other stuff outside of that. So how do you get it all done? Welcome back to Aussie Med Shoots. My name's Francis. If you haven't been here before, I am a medical student at Sydney University in my final year. And on this channel, you'll see videos about my experiences at med school, my genuine advice for how to get through it, and also just some generic med topics. So if that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that little notification bell so that you can see when I put out new videos. I'm aiming to do this weekly and like this video, leave a comment if there's something in particular you want to see or if you've got tips of your own. I recently completed my first block of my final year, which was in children's and adolescent health. You can check out my video a few weeks ago on how this has been. For many students, it's been incredibly grueling. We've had really long hours at the hospital that we need to be there. On top of that, like I mentioned, we've got lectures we need to be learning a lot of lectures we've got to be learning. We've got assignments, presentations, and in those lectures, we need to basically relearn all of medicine, but now in the context of children, because the way that you treat them, manage them, and certain conditions like their incidence can be different between children and adults. So this video is on the week before my final exams of the block. How did I manage to do all of that? Plus be president of sports club, plus, you know, get some exercise, good sleep, and manage to pass nonetheless. I'm not going to claim that I know how every person can achieve success academically, so what I thought I would do instead is take you through what I did and why I did it, and you can take away what you think will work best for you. To start off, I get up at the same time every day throughout the week, including on the weekend. This consistency is key because if you start getting up later on the weekend trying to get that catch-up sleep, you end up finding it that much harder to get up at the right time during the week. So to keep my mornings simple, I do the exact same thing every morning after I get up. I get dressed, I make my bed, I pack my bag, and then I go downstairs to make breakfast. And much the same as my morning routine in my bedroom, I make my breakfast the same every morning as well. It's pretty healthy, I think, but don't be misled, this is probably the only consistently healthy meal that I'll have throughout the week. By keeping the same breakfast every morning, it's quick, easy, and effortless. Next, I have to get to the hospital. I have to walk there and catch a train, as you might have seen in one of my previous videos. While I'm doing that, I'm either doing some unkey questions on my phone, or I'm listening to motivational podcasts, trying to really wake myself up and get myself keen for the day. If you don't already know what Anki is, I highly recommend getting involved in it, watching some videos on how to use it. Very basically, it's a type of flashcard system that spaces out your learning to encourage and reinforce the stuff that you're trying to memorize. I really like to use it because it synchronizes from your phone to your laptop, you can review your notes, you can reinforce things, and you can test yourself on it regularly without having to get out a big laptop or textbook. I found that if I make these questions well, I can reinforce the information so that when I get tested on it, my recall is immediate. However, there is a trick to making questions well, and that's something that you should do some research on or watch some videos on. It's something that I might make a video on in the future. My morning routine is the same Monday to Friday, so I'm probably not gonna repeat that for the following days. Once I arrive at the hospital, I've gotta go find my team's office. This week, I was gonna be on sleep. While I was waiting for the team to arrive, I figured I'd start by prepping a history that I needed to take later on and submit as an assignment. Highly recommend getting on top of these things as early as you can. I ended up leaving this until the night before my exam and kind of regretted it a little bit. My thinking was the night before an exam, I don't like to cram information in, so I figured might as well spend that time doing an assignment, but then the assignment was taking longer than I expected, which kind of stressed me out. Lesson learned. Once my team arrived, we started with rounding. Rounding is the bane of my student career life. It's essentially where the doctor goes and sees all of their patients, so basically to get an update. They might ask the patient how they're doing, maybe do a quick exam. If it's like a respiratory patient, they'll have a listen to the lungs, see how the lungs are progressing. 
and then they've got the rest of their team with them so that they can make any changes to the plan such as changing medications, asking for consults or trying to organize certain investigations into anything that seems to be going differently than the last time they saw that patient. As a student, you're basically just following the team around from patient to patient. If you're lucky, the rounds are less than an hour long. If you're unlucky, they go for the entire day. You're trying to figure out what's going on with these patients. All of the medical team are already in the know. Maybe it's great if you can get in ahead of time and learn about these patients, but I'm in my final year of medicine and all those staff keep telling me that this is an incredibly useful part of our learning, I'm yet to find out how to take advantage of it. So instead, I started reading typed notes while I was walking around with them. I figured that would be a bit better than doing Anki because when you're on your mobile phone in the hospital, people kind of just assume you're on social media, I think. These typed notes, however, are passed down from years and years ago from a medical student and they summarize all of our lectures really well. It's a bit concerning that these notes are still accurate despite being years and years old, but I guess the fundamentals of medicine haven't changed too much, at least not what we get tested on, and I'm not complaining because I don't have the time to make notes and I probably wouldn't summarize things as well as this person has for me. Following on from this, there was a multidisciplinary team meeting, which means that the nurses, physiotherapists, doctors, and other healthcare professionals that are involved in one area of patient care, such as respiratory health, all get together to discuss the patients and explain how all of them are going to do different things related to that patient's treatment. And while this is a little more useful because you get to hear the doctors explain their thinking behind certain treatment and clinical decisions, Sometimes it's kind of a bit above your level and so I still had my typed notes that I could read here. Following on from that, there was Journal Club, which is when a doctor finds an article, a research article to present. After this, it's time for a quick lunch. I don't have time to make it before I leave, but fortunately there's a cafeteria with really cheap food at this particular hospital and they've usually got a vegetable option so that I can get some amount of nutrition. I usually use lunch as a time to catch up on social messages, but also get ahead on club admin related things like emails. If you're with a good team, then they'll usually offer to teach you something. Oftentimes this is really useful because you can be flipping through textbooks uh, for like an hour trying to figure out the basic summary of the most important things you need to know for a particular condition, whereas a clinician that's been dealing with this for years can just summarize it in a few sentences for you and save you so much time. But once that's done, I'm on my way home. You've probably already guessed that while I'm on my way home, I'm going to be doing Anki, try and fit in as much of that as I can. Exercise is crucial to your physical and mental health, even though it's time consuming. So because of this, I'm doing weights. Weights are incredibly boring. It's really not the thing that I'm most interested in. However, like I said, it's really quick because I've got these really easily adjustable dumbbells at home that I can do most exercises with. And it also gives me the chance to strengthen myself a little bit to avoid injury in combat sports, which is what I'm a bit more interested in. Because it was too late, I figured I would order myself a highly nutritious dinner through Uber, which was basically just pizza. I spent way too much money on this and it wasn't even good. Kids, be healthy, eat veggies. Tuesday was pretty much the same routine as Monday, except I got home a bit earlier. So here's me explaining what I did that day. I managed to leave early today. So I'm gonna do a practice test and follow that up with reviewing where I've gone wrong or some areas that are missing. When it comes to doing practice tests, I prefer not to leave these until the very last day or the weekend before an exam. That's because I think if I notice that there's a big gap in my knowledge, I don't have enough time to actually learn the material and really commit it to memory. That being said, I do like to leave a few practice questions, maybe a whole practice test until the weekend before, but that's not so that I can check what information is missing from my mind. That's so that I can refine the art of exam taking. Things like being able to maintain your focus, being able to read through a question and pick out the relevant bits of information. I wanna keep that sharp right until the exam. After taking this practice test, I decided that I would film a video on it. And if you have a look at my channel, that's probably the video that I have out before this one. Wednesday, as you might already guess, I have the exact same routine in the morning. Um, I also had similar things going on with the medical team, but this time I also had a presentation at 3 p.m. Now, somewhat unfortunately, somewhat fortunately, I had accidentally convinced my team for the presentation that uh, it was due last week. So we had already prepped everything we needed and then found out oh, it was actually due this week. This was kind of beneficial in one sense though, because that allowed us more time to prepare for our exams. So as I think I mentioned earlier, really good idea to get those assignments out of the way as early as you can so that they're not getting in the way of your exam preparation and you don't have that stressing the back of your mind. After the presentation, I had to rush out of the hospital to the building next door 
because the clinical school had put on an extra session for us to practice for our practical examinations, which are called OSCEs. This means that they had a number of dummies laid out that we can listen to for heart murmurs. We also had bone models so that we could practice interosseous cannulation, which is where if you can't get a cannula into a vein, then you just drill one into the bone. We also got the chance to practice with a baby dummy um, going through basic life support and advanced life support. And although this was all extremely valuable, it didn't necessarily help me as much as I had hoped. I ended up getting home really late, I think around 8 p.m. And that's because I had all of that extra stuff in the evening at the hospital. Because of this, I didn't have time for exercise. I didn't have time to make dinner, but my girlfriend fortunately bought me some pies from a restaurant in Sydney called the Peanut Butter Bar. They were so good. Not healthy, but oh well. On Thursday I had pretty much the same routine, but this time I also had a physical examination that we had to do. Normally these are done in the OSCEs themselves, but they decided maybe because of COVID that students could go and find a patient and then they would all have an examiner, go see the patient one student at a time in small groups and the examiner will decide on the spot, hey, do a cardiac exam or do a gastrointestinal exam. This was more useful than actual OSCEs though because the examiner stuck around and went through the physiology behind signs that we were hearing and also explained certain things we missed and why those were important. Now we do get this throughout our block. Doctors will sometimes give us a bit of advice or get us to do a quick listen with our steps, something like that but it's a bit more useful in the context of an assessment because our mindset is just so in tune with, ah, oh, what did I miss? I really wanna know, it's super important to me. Okay, I got it home a bit earlier, so I decided to review some of the practice questions I had done. When you do a practice test, it's not really enough to just see what you did right or wrong. I really like to go through it slowly and understand, ah, oh, what could I have read in this question? or thought about differently, might have allowed me to get a better answer on here, a correct answer rather. But also, of course, you're trying to see the gaps in your knowledge and fill those in. I went over lectures as well, and then I tried to meditate. I ideally would do this every day, but I just didn't have enough time this week, given how early I was getting up and the rush that I had to get to the hospital in time. Thursday at night, I've got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training. So on the way there, you guessed it, I do some Anki. Even though this is a really time intense period, I still try to make some room for things like my combat sports training because I think it breaks up the monotony. And as well, once you get out of being in the same environment, I think your brain resets a little bit and also starts to go, hey, I'm not studying, I should be studying. And then when you do get back to study, you're that much more engaged because you were a bit scared of not getting enough done. I'm still training because I really want to compete later this year as well. And if you don't keep up your training consistently, you're not going to improve, which has been the case for me. I had a number of injuries, I did judo for a bit, I had surgery and all of these things combined with meds stopped me training as much or at least as consistently as I ought to. On the way home, some more Anki, quick shower and then bed. Friday was pretty much the same as every other day in the block so I won't repeat that but here's me on Saturday. It's now 4.20pm, I don't know how many hours of study I've done so far, probably somewhere between 4, maybe 5 hours. Um, I just did an hour of OSCE preparation via Zoom. You can practice looking at the stem, say the child has come in, the parent's been told that they had a febrile seizure and the parent's worried about what this is, explain it to them. And so on Zoom, you can explain that to your colleague and then you can kind of give each other a bit of feedback about how you thought you went, what you thought you missed, what you maybe want to consider next time when you get stuck here. Um, you can also then make it a bit more realistic than if you're practicing on your own because your colleague can at like the five or six minute point be like, hey, I heard that my child might have brain damage from this, is that true? And then you've got to kind of react to those questions. So pretty useful. Um, I'm gonna study for a bit longer uh, until 5 p.m. and then I'm going to move on and do some exercise. Now, I already mentioned that sleep is important to me, so I try not to exercise too late. Arnold Schwarzenegger in some of his motivational speeches says you need to get six hours of sleep, five hours of sleep, forget what people say about that seven to eight. And his reasoning behind that is that if you're wasting those two hours that you could be working, then you're not getting ahead of other people. But I've found that if I get one less hour of sleep, then I am half as productive, I am miserable. I'm probably gonna give up earlier, eat less healthy than I already do. And quite frankly, if I had just gotten an extra hour of REM sleep, I would have gotten twice as much done in just as much time. Sunday was the day before the test, so I try not to learn any new material here. But I do go through my Anki, I do it very calmly though. If you start to fret about trying to get as much information as you can in, and you're going from question to question to question as quick as you can, you end up getting nothing in. So if I end up fretting, then I just stop studying. Now I'm gonna stop here to keep this video from getting any longer than it probably already has. 
I've tried to be as quick as I can, but sometimes these videos take a while to explain. Now, if you do want to follow up to see how I did on the test, I can do that. We did already get told that we passed, so I can tell you that much, but as to what my particular score was in compared to what I wanted to get, I'm not sure that I know that exactly yet. If you want to see how a med student spends their break in Sydney, let me know and I can show a bit of what I've been doing. Or if you want to see other things on this channel, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm hoping to put out another video on GAMSAT advice soon, but if that's something that interests you and you're already preparing for that September test, then check out my basic advice on GAMSAT, which is already up. Now, make sure to get plenty of sleep and I'll see you next time.